Fish on, fish on, baby. Fish is on. Barbless hooks. I gotta keep them then. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. It's quite a nice fish. There we have it. <laughs> oh, this one does not have a tag. That's kind of cool. Well, we did it. Managed to get a bass before we head up north to Camp Claw in Maine. Choke the filthy frog. Let's get him unhooked. Marbles hooks, pops right out. Send him on his way. Thank you, little buddy. <laughs> All right, sending him back. Farewell. Back into the backyard pond you go. Bucky, wave goodbye. Oh, big one. Big one. That's a big one. That's one of the bigger ones. That's one of the bigger ones in the pond. Oh, he's in the pad. That poop just popped me off. There's no way this fish is still on. Oh no, she's still on. Come here, old girl. Oh, it's a good one. It's one of the big ones. This one's got a tag in it, too. Ha! What a cool eat. I tried to shake him off, but that fish just ate it way too well. Freaking four pounder. I'm gonna miss these Texas pond bass. This one's got a tag, too. Seven, eight, two. Choke the frog! It's pretty cool to be able to catch some nice largemouth in your backyard. I'm a very blessed and lucky individual. Okay, let's send this guy back and uh, head back up to the house. Thank you. And we bid farewell to fish number two of the evening. Bye-bye. Luck, come here. Come here, Luck. Take a quick pause from eating the grass for me, will ya? Say hello to the peeps. They haven't seen you in a while, I imagine. You used to be the star of every video. Things, uh, things changed. Well, the reason why I'm down in my pond right now doing a bit of fishing is because this will unfortunately be my last day in Texas to, to wet a line. Myself, Mila, and Kaylee, of course the dogs too, are headed up north to settle down at Camp Claw for a bit. The cabin, the new part of the cabin is just nearly complete and uh, as things get hot and muggy here in Texas, I find myself creeping towards north. Tomorrow we leave at 5 a.m. It's gonna be absolute hell especially with two dogs and a baby catching a red eye flight that early but i figured let's make it even more challenging film a vlog during that but before i pick up the camera in the morning i wanted to shoot a little segment there in the evening what are you doing scoop you excited to go to maine she is definitely a maine wiener i also too bigger picture want to get more into going back to my roots filming what i used to love to film that being these one-on-one -on -one videos i'm really excited for the summer there's some amazing content ideas that i have personally that i think are amazing and that i think are interesting and unique being on youtube for almost let's see well it's been well over 10 years now it's been like 13 or 14 years being on youtube for that long it definitely becomes a challenge to step outside that little bubble and to recreate yourself and to think up of new content, especially in a setting where fishing is very widespread now on YouTube. So I'm excited to hit the ground running. I'm gonna do a lot of videos like this as well where I just kind of get a chance to sit down with you guys, talk for a bit, and then get right back to the action. I will say one thing, more, more so than missing Texas, I'm gonna miss the pond. It is looking really dry right now, unfortunately, but everything else is doing good. As you can see, the fish are thriving. They look healthy, with the exception of that first one. I don't know what was wrong with that first one. The second one looked great, but anyway, we succeeded. I caught a fish. I'm gonna continue packing. We've got a lot of stuff we need to bring up north to back wieners and enjoy this travel vlog from Texas to Camp Claw, Maine. <laughs>
got two dogs, 50 bags, and a baby. We're headed to Maine. Mila, are you ready? Never in a million years of my traveling days would I thought that I'd be traveling with two dogs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bags, a baby, and a mama. Do you ever have the urge to travel with two dogs and a baby? Take it from me, don't. It's, uh, it's stressful. <laughs> we're taking the red eye this morning, it's 4 a.m. and uh, we're gonna see if we can make our flight to Maine. Are you ready, Chunky? What do you think? What do you think? Her says, <laughs> I'm gonna pass out on that plane. Her says, the first thing I do when I get on that plane is I'm gonna poop, man. You gonna poop on that plane? Tickets, tickets, scan my tickets, scan my tickets, scan them. Absolutely beautiful weather to be traveling in. Sunny and rainy. It's, like it's, it's, it's raining on baby. <laughs> One last flight, we are Bangor bound. Let's get it. What is up, Maine? Whew, feels so good to be back. We've landed, we're safe and sound. The next step is to figure out where my dumbass parked. Woo! Your baby! We made it! Welcome to Maine, little one. We made it, Weens. We made it. Home, sweet home. Welcome to Camp Claw. Feels good to say that again. Let's uh, let's check out the new, the new cabin. Okay, this will be Mila and Kaylee's first time, and probably Euro's first time too, seeing the cabin. Welcome. Make yourself at home. What do you think? Whoa. Whoa. Let's go. Let's go inside. Whoa. So it looks a whole lot different, doesn't it, Milo? Actually, she's never even seen it to ever. begin with, ever. What? What do you think, Milo? It's so good. Can you clap? I mentioned in so many different videos in the past when I've come up here, we've been working on tearing down the old part of the cabin. I say old. It was built in 1999 and uh, wanted to build something a little bit more suitable for the family, for Milo and Kaylee and the dogs. And also too, just to create more space for when we've got guests here too, because there's some times where we'll have literally like six people or seven people staying in a camp claw. But this is it, I'll do a full tour eventually soon, but kind of want to give you guys a brief look. It's not done yet. We still have backsplash to do, finish up the railing. The outside of the house still needs siding. And I'm trying to think what else needs to be done too. A couple other things, but for the most part, it's like 90, 2% all the way there. It's just been a slow work in progress. What do you guys think? Love it. It's pretty cool, huh? It's beautiful. It's it better is. than what I pictured it would be. Tons of light. Like it's about to rain right now. We've got so much light it in here. It's so nice. A few hours have elapsed and uh, well, we've gotten some things done. Set up Miles' crib. Still no AC in this cabin. I paid for uh, a double mini split and it is what it is, so we got the fan running in her room. What's going on, Peanut? Hey, you brushing your teeth? You brushing your teeth? Also, too, it's too late to be bothered to set up the box springs. 
in the bed frame, so we're sleeping on the mattress on the floor. Good old uh, college bachelor day style. This is the closet. We've got all of our bags situated. Eventually we'll have uh, some rods hung up and maybe a dresser, but I don't know, it feels like, we've been at it for like three or four hours right now and it feels like we didn't get anything done. Like we did sort out like some essential stuff like Kaylee's vacuuming right now. We got plates and cups and things washed. It's just a process when you've got a little one two dogs and basically moving into a new cabin. Anyway, I'm gonna go out to the barn and grab some stuff. I got an interesting story I wanna tell you guys. Anything you wanna to say to the peeps before you go to bed? Cool, got it. It has been a long day, to say the least. Let's get some light up in here. Ooh, maybe too much light. 11 p.m., Milo hasn't even gone down yet and we still have so much to do. We did get a couple things done here and there for the most part. It's uh, it's gonna be a very slow burn for moving into the new cabin. Kaylee's putting Milo down. I figured I'd tell you guys kind of a funny story. Now, <clears throat> let me set this up. Uh, Peric and I reunited for Never Stop 3. The trilogy is complete, or should I say, is almost complete. I have to be transparent. This is my first time up in Maine this summer. The whole premise of Never Stop 3 was to start at the very tip of Key West in Florida, which is mile marker number one for US Route 1. And we planned on going and fishing all the states all the way along the East Coast, that edge on the Atlantic Ocean, and finishing up in Maine. Everything was perfect. Everything really worked out. We caught fish in every single state. We were cranking, we were hustling. We were like on day 28 of filming and fishing. And as soon as we got to Maine, shit hit the fan. I'm talking like literally the temps dropped to the low 30 degree Fahrenheit range. Granted, this is June, by the way, that we're fishing in Maine. And usually this time of the year, I can always count on a good bite. And literally, as we came up here from Massachusetts to Maine, a giant nor'easter hit New England and completely squashed any plans of us catching fish in probably one of the easiest states to do so. We had anticipated fishing here for three days, early June, and it didn't work out. We really didn't know what to do. Like literally, we, we were here for like five days. Every single day it rained, every single day it blew, every single day it was cold. We tried, we fished, but could not produce. Long story short, we're still doing Never Stop. I'm not sure if Wes or Perry can really want me to talk about this, but I figured it'd be an interesting story. Kind of give you guys a concept as how much we care about this series. And you know, we could have very easily wrapped it up with some sort of BS like talking point. Uh, we did technically catch one single fish in Maine. It was a smallmouth. Regardless, we're not giving up. I think we're gonna reunite late June and see if we can make it happen. This has been the longest project filming project I've ever worked on. This has cost me way more money. This has cost me way more time than Never Stop 1 and 2 combined. And if you were to take those and multiply them by 10, like I'm not exaggerating. I'm also not complaining too. I'm just giving you guys a perspective as to what it takes to do this. And I think it's, I mean, anyone can do it. It just requires a lot of patience, a lot of time and you know, a good vision. And our vision has not been met yet. And that's why we're regrouping and doing our thing late June. So NS3 is not stopped. I guess that kind of is fitting for the whole never stop tour theme. But anyway, doing some dirty laundry. Gotta go back inside, kiss my good night. We'll pick this vlog up in the morning. Hope you guys are enjoying this. Maybe do a bit of fishing. Tomorrow I gotta clean the, the old part of the cabin up. I, I, I took a little peep in there and there's a couple dead mice and some, and some rat shit. So I got, a, I, got, I got my work cut out for me. Uh, I bid for all the you winners and we'll see you in the morning. Beautiful day in Maine, nothing new. It has rained 15 days straight up here, according to my buddy who lives up here full time. Doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon. Good morning, Wieners. Day number two officially, family up here in Maine. Um, I don't know if I really give you guys a good outside perspective of the cabin, but now that we've got a little more light, I'll show you. Here she is. There's Mila waving at you guys. Say good morning, Mila. But it is significantly bigger than the old part and significantly bigger than the part that we knocked down. Super happy with it. We just need to get all the uh, ends tied up. I know I ended yesterday on a story. I figured let's start a, start today with another story. We had some major boat issues on NS3 and it seems like that is a common occurrence for every never stop. For those of you guys who watched them before, you probably know the first never stop, I took out Peric's lower unit on a rock. I, it, I, I don't know, I, it was before I really knew how to operate a boat and read buoys, I went left on a red. But never stop number two, we actually lost 
a fuel hose on our outboard. <clears throat> Just to put this in perspective, um, this hose, there's a hose in here in this little mesh that feeds fuel from the fuel tank to the outboard. And that snapped and started spewing gas all over the place. Uh, and that occurred midway through the trip, actually early on in the trip in New Mexico. Luckily back then we were working with a boat manufacturer because we were big wigs and we were able to get the thing fixed really quickly. Fast forward to NS3, the tradition continues. Let me just show you the piece that came off my boat. I'm not gonna give anything away, but just take a look at this side and then take a look at that side. If you're, a, if you're a boathead and know what you're looking at, then you can fill in the blanks and drop a comment for everyone. But if you're not, I'm gonna leave it a surprise because it's an absolute show. Speaking of shows, let's get day two kicked off right. Get some donkeys. Time to get some coffee. Much needed coffee, by the way. Fell asleep at 12. My little got us up at 5.30. That's what's up. Gotta love it. Large black ice, please. Hold the ice. Just give me the large black. Let's see if you guys can guess which one's my order, and then see if you can guess which one is Kaylee's order. Yeah, hi. Can I get a large ice coffee? Hey, how's it going? Can I get a large black ice coffee? And then can I get a... Um, Large ice macchiato with caramel. Full milk in that? Yes, please. Okay. Could you guys by any chance put peanut butter in that? We don't have, we can't open our peanut butter um, where it's an allergen. And Got I don't know, if, I don't think we have any peanut butter at all. Okay, gotcha, no worries. That'll do her. $29.53. Thank you. How is all that food $29? That's actually incredible. Now granted, I know they microwave their they're Sammy's, but when you wake up in the morning and you just don't really want to deal with the day, you wake up, you waddle on over to a, a DD's, a Dunkin' D's, and you order yourself a microwave sandwich with some burnt coffee, and that's how you get your day kicked off. At least here in, you know, northern Maine, that's how you do it. Get a little Sammy, get a little coffee, bing, bong, boom, hit the water, catch 20 pounds of smallmouth, there, done. Get home, crush a case of white clothes, go to bed, do it all over again. Nice, thank you. Is that it? Have a good day. You have a great one. Duncan D's has been acquired. Time to get some gas. Big mayfly hatch at the gas pump today. That's actually a really good sign. I, I probably should be out in the water throwing a popper right now. Usually when you see those little guys hatching up here in, in Maine in early summer, it's uh, it's popper season. For you fly guys, it's like fly fishing season, but not for me. I, I, like, uh, I like cheating and throwing something with not one trouble hook, but two. But no, usually, it seems like every time this year I come up here, I see those little tiny mayflies hatch. And whenever that happens, you wait for a slick, calm day, kind of like this with a bit of overcast, and you just literally catch 20 pounds on a popper. I will also say, not a huge fan of gladiators, but that thing is sick. That's probably one of the only gladiators that has turned my head. Big KC lights on top. I dig it. pups be good don't do anything I would I'll be back shortly Let's do this. Got one for the little tiny frog, Adam. This will work just as good. Anything that looks like a little bug or a dragonfly on the surface, 
they're generally going to take advantage of. Usually this bite works better right after a nice hatch. Oh yeah. Now it's ready for some smallies. This is going to be fun. I'm going to tighten this drag. Get hook set on them. I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for any deep lurking fish too. Got a nice storm front rolling in as well. I'm sure you guys can see that. That's pretty crazy. Cannot shake this poor weather. Oh, there we go. Oh, I had him. That was so sick. That was so sick. That was a good fish. I saw him first by the day on a tiny filthy frog in open water. Let's see if we can hook up this time. There we go. I'm on. I don't think it's big. No, it's a little guy. <laughs> we'll take him though. <laughs> the little, little dude. Ate the frog. There's nothing more unique as far as freshwater fishing goes up here than uh, throwing a frog in the shallows for smallmouth. Little tiny, filthy frog, little tiny smallmouth. I swear they're a whole lot bigger in here. We just got to find them. It's getting really slick right now. Not a, not a puff of wind. I love it. Oh, that was a good one. That was a good one. Oh my God, that was a nice fish. I saw him, that was a good one. I do not know how I lost that fish. Damn it, he might come back. Damn it, that was a good one. Yeah, let's throw the fly around in the six weight. Let's, let's create a little challenge for ourselves here. Ah, voila. It's a little rusted, but it'll do. Oh, and here comes the rain, right on freaking cue. Lovely. Lovely. You know, I got a little smaller popper here. Maybe throw this guy around. A little white one. Oh, I like black. Black usually contrasts pretty good on, on a day like today. This is my lucky one too. I've got a lot of fish on this little popper. A lot of smallmouth on this little popper. Rain's rolling in. Smallmouth are getting active. Time to break out the fly. Change things up here. Do some fly fishing for a change. <sighs> one of my favorite ways to get them. 30 false casts later. Oh, I got one under me. Got a big small right under me. Oh my gosh, I just saw him flash on it. Holy hell, that was sick. Oh, he's coming up for it. I'm watching him come up for it. He's coming up for it. Oh, it's a good one. It's a big one. Oh my gosh, there's like two of them swimming underneath the popper. No way, that was so sick. That was so sick. I watched him like nose it. He's still under it. There's two of them. Two big ones. Oh my gosh, this bank is teeming. Why did he not eat that? That was so cool. I've never seen one do that before. There we go. Good cast. Hope you don't come up. Got him. Oh, that was so sick. That was so sick. It's a good one too. Oh, he just jumped. <laughs> How epic is that? It's not a bad one. Oh, he just jumped again. <laughs> that is so sick. They must be post spawn because this fish is barely fighting. He's not a bad one. He's probably about a... Hi, two pounder. Oh, there he goes. He just woke up a little bit. I don't think he knew he was fully hooked. That was so cool, dude. I physically watched that fish come from the bottom all the way to the surface to suck down that popper. I'm sure you guys barely even saw the bite. I, I probably wouldn't even know if it was a bite unless I saw the fish actually go under it. How beautiful is that? Nice post spawn main smallmouth during a rainstorm <laughs> on the fly rod too, dude. Oh, cool. Tried and true black popper. Cannot go wrong. Let's get some underwater releases of this guy. All right, back at it. There you go. Another one right behind it. Oh my gosh, dude, back to back. Are you kidding me? Oh, they're literally eating it while it's just sitting there. There must have been a hatch not too long ago because they're, they're really oriented on the surface, it seems like. Oh my God. Got him. Oh my God, that's a good one. No, he just pulled hooks. That was a good fish. No. Oh, that was so sick. That was so sick. That is why it is so much fun. That was like a four pound small that just slurped my fly off the surface. Oh, I don't think I got enough, got enough hook set on it. Oh my God, that was so sick. Let's do that again like five more times. Holy hell. They seem to really want it like on the first couple twitches. And what's so interesting too, is I'll hit that popper like once or twice and I'll just let it sit there. And I'm watching beneath my popper to see if anything's coming up. This water is gin clear. Like you could drink it straight from the freaking surface. And it's really easy to spot these small without two seconds before they're about to potentially eat the popper. It's also like way more fun to watch them slowly rise 
and check that thing out before they do crush it. I'm getting way more play on the fly than I am the freaking frog, that's for sure. I do have a, I think I've got a pop in my truck. I might go grab it. Oh, what the hell? That was so sick. It's a little guy. He might come back for it. Got him. Oh, it's a decent one. That's a good one. Oh, he's gonna jump. I almost went in for another gas because I didn't get a bite. Oh, that's so sick. That's so sick. Get over here, buddy. I got hooks on him now. That's dope, dude. That is too freaking dope. Come here, bud. Come here. God. Nice little high one pounder, but a very vigor fight, even on a six weight. Look at that. Absolute beauty. Usually when I come out here, I just stick to spinning rods and throwing bloopers, which I love. But I figured we'd spice it up a little bit, change things up. See you later. How do they expect you to build a whole ass table with one of these? It's ridiculous. Now, how do you smack your daddy? No, please do not. Waste. How do you smack your daddy? Do not waste it. <laughs> and then, uh... Okay. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna go towards you, babe. Nothing worse than sticking a toothpick in between your toe and your toenail and kicking hardwood is building furniture. Take it from me. Looks good. Looks good. Hey Myla, thank you for all the help. Food hack. If you're short on time and you want to be really lazy like myself, one great way to cook steak, specifically a nice filet mignon cut, is to throw that thang in the air fryer and then finish it off on the hot surface. Do a bit of searing uh, on top and bottom. I'm also not the best cook, nor am I a chef, so maybe take my advice with a grain of salt. But it works for me. Cheers, wieners. To day number two up here at Camp Call. And to day number two of filming this vlog, Please let me know if I should keep doing these. I know it's not very heavy on the fishing, although we did catch a fish in the beginning of, but it gives you kind of, it gives you guys a, a different perspective on my life. And I also love vlogging too. I don't always love to just film fishing. And you know, I've got the time and I've got the camera, so might as well. We also touched up Miles' room a bit. We got curtains on, that's key. She woke up at 5.30 a.m. this morning because that's pretty much when the sun rises here in the north woods of Maine, and she gets up when the sun comes up. So we had no uh, we had no blinds this morning, so Kelly and I got like four hours of sleep on top of a red eye. Uh, it was it's quite an interesting morning. I managed to get a good nap with Milo today, though. I, I really wanted to film more today. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed it. There's not much more I think I can film. It's getting late. Milo's, Mila is actually gonna hit the hay here in a second, so she probably wants me to turn the camera off and stop yelling, but Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like I said, drop me a comment. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. I'm not gonna turn my whole channel into vlogs, but it is fun to get back to my roots and kind of film what uh, what I like filming. All right, big baby, is there anything you wanna to say to the people before we say, before we say keep fishing, never stop? Say keep drinking milkies, never stop. Say stop, stop. Say keep fishing, never stop. <laughs> <laughs>